October 3rd, my name is Beatrice Cazzo, Special Magistrate for the City of North Miami. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if a code violation exists at your property as observed and cited by a code enforcement officer of the city. If the city is not able to prove its case, then I will dismiss the case and you may leave. If English is not your primary language, then please inform me when I call your case. We have a translator who will assist you during the proceedings. These proceedings are being recorded. Therefore, all persons who are speaking should do so at a time to ensure that all testimony is clearly audible on the recording device. When your case is called, the property owner, agent for the property owner, or and any witness that you may have should come forward to the podium on the left side of the room. When asked, please speak directly into the microphone and say aloud your name, your business or mailing address, and your relationship to the property. If you are not the property owner or an attorney representing the property owner, then you must present a notarized power of attorney affidavit in order for your testimony to be taken on behalf of the property owner. For new cases, you will be asked for the record if you are aware of and understand the violation that is being heard today. And do you understand what is required to resolve the violation? Please answer accordingly. The city will present its case first and then the property owner or violator will be given an opportunity to testify on their own behalf, to bring forward witnesses to testify, to present evidence and photographs, and to cross-examine the city's witnesses. Following the case presentation, I will issue a finding of fact on the case. If I find that a violation of city codes exists or existed at your property, then depending on the type of case, I will set an abatement date for the violation to be resolved. Or for repeat violations, I will impose a daily fine amount. For new non-repeat cases, my order will include an abatement date by which you must resolve the violation and a daily fine amount that I may impose at a future hearing date should the violation not be resolved by the abatement date. If I find sufficient case to postpone enforcement action at this time, I will table this case proceeding to another hearing date in the, in the future. If you do not agree with my finding of fact and or ruling, then the property owner may appeal the administrative order on the case to the circuit court. An appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of the execution of the administ administrative order to be appealed. In accordance with Florida statutes, if a person decides to appeal any decision may be by, made by the special magistrate with respect to any matter considered at these proceedings, then the person will need a verbatim record of the proceeding. This record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. The cost of obtaining the verbatim record shall be the sole responsibility of the appellant. And if it is recommended that persons who plan to appeal their case should provide their own court reporter at this proceedings. Pursuant to city codes, if the city of North Miami prevails in prosecuting a case before the special magistrate, the city shall be entitled to recover all costs incurred in prosecuting the case. The current cost assessment amount is $100 per case. Once the city records records an order that imposes a fine and authorizes a lien against the property, then the city will charge additional administrative fees to record and release the lien. Now I will ask everyone present to please rise and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If anyone present here who plan to give um, testimony today, please rise and raise your right hands. Please rise, raise your right hands if you're going to give testimony in any case today. If you're going to testify, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you are about to give in this proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please say, I do. I do. Thank you. You may be seated. Mr. Graham, do we have any additions, corrections, or deletions to the hearing agenda? Yes, Your Honor, we do. Um, the following cases that I will call aloud have uh, been removed from tonight's hearing calendar because the case has been postponed to another hearing or ha has complied prior to the beginning of the, the calendar call tonight. Starting with your agenda on item number one and item number two, Afsal and Sabia Khan, cases CEBNP 2012-00011 and CELDR 2012-00004 have both been postponed to the January hearing calendar. Uh, item number four, Andrew Parrish, case CEBLR 2012-00051 has complied. Item five, Antoine and uh, Clinty uh, Theodore, case CELDR 2012-00048 has complied. Item six, Audrey Samuel, case CEFAW 2012-00070 has complied. Item eight, Bernadette Florinord, KCETRA 2012-00010 has complied. Item 11, Charlotte Holdings LLC, KCEFAW 2012-00085 has complied. Turning to the next page. Agenda item 15. Iguasin Group Inc. CEZPU 2012-00012 is complied. Item 18, Erica Chambers, KCEPFY 2012-00062 is complied. Item 20, Gerald and Nell Opstal, KCEEXP 2012-00107 postponed in November. Item 21, Hallett Styles, KCEEXP 2012-00007. One four is complied. Item 25, Jacob and Monique uh, Praschik, uh, KCEBNP 2011-00208 is postponed to December. Turning to the next page. Item 26, Jean and Berlinda uh, Narcisse, CEIVY 2012-00178 is complied. Item 27, Jean Toussaint, CEOSV, 2012-00046 is complied. Item 28, Jennifer Libsner, CEECS, 2012-00005 is complied. Item 29, Jesus and, uh, Moda and Anna Forbes, CEIVY, 2012-00180 has complied. Item 30, Jor Jordan Lastra, CEMHO, 2012-00027, postponed for one month. Case uh, 32, Karen Nunez, CEBLR, 2012-00058, has complied. Item 33, uh, Karim uh, G. Dinelli. Uh, CEFAW 2012-00089 has complied. Item 35, uh, Corinna and Amadea Lopez, CEMHO 2012-00049 has complied. Item 36, Kathy Mary Clements, CEEXP 2012-00100 has complied. Item 38, Lisette Mar uh, Morelli, CEBNP 2012-00081 has complied. Item 39, Luis Baez, our current owner at uh, KCEFAW 
12000090 is complied. Turning to the next page, item 40. Mark Squilla, CEXP 2012-00101 is complied. Item 43, Marie Samuel, CEBNP 2012-00048 is complied. Item 45, Michelle Granger, CEIVY 2012-00161 has complied. Item 46, P Patricia uh, Aries Romero, uh, KCESTR 2012-00004 has been moved to the morning hearing venue. Item 47, uh, Rangel Fernandez, CEBNP 2012-00050, postpone one month. Item 48, Rafael Jean, CEODS 2012-00052 is complied. Item 50, Salvador Benvenido Gomez, CEBNP 2012-00072 is complied. Item 51, Spartan Realty Assets, LLC, KCEBNP. 2012-00076, postponed to November. Turning to the next page. Item 52, uh, Susie uh, Voltim and v Vigel Jones, CEPFY 2012-00154 is complied. Item 53, Thor Solbergero Corporation, CEMHO 2012-00047, Postpone one month. Item 54, Tina and Bobby Lee Adseed, uh, CEMHO 2012-00052 is complied. Item 55, Tracy uh, McCullough, CEXP 2012-00110 com has complied. Item 56, Troy and Tuana Daniel, CEODS 2012-00051 is complied. Item 57, U.S. National Bank Association, CEPFY 2012-00152 is complied. Item 60, Wendy Golding, CELDR 2012-00052, postpone one month. Item 61-62, Wendy Golding, CEMHF 2012-00001 and CH, uh, CEMHO 2012-00056 have both complied. Item 63, Wendy Golding, case CEMHS 2012-00012 is postponed for one month. Turning to the next page, uh, item uh, 65, Yolanda Concepcion, CEIVY 2012-00186 has complied. And item 68, Jesus Mota and Anna Forbes, CEODS 2012-00096 has complied. So those are the amendments to the evening hearing calendar. So amended, if we're ready, you may call your first case. Thank you, and we'll begin to, uh, tonight with agenda item number 24 on your agenda, agenda 24, Herbert Driggs Jr. and others for a property located at 1450 Northeast 132nd Road, KCEXP, 2012-00109. This is Officer Clark's case. It's a new case that he opened on June 7, 2012 uh, for mildew stains visible on the property walls with a requirement to pressure clean the property. Good evening. Good evening. Would you please state your name for the record? Yes, Donna Blastino. And what is your relationship to the property, Ms. Plastino? Um, I'm on the deed. I'm on the title. On the title. Okay. Yeah. So you're one of the property owners. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, for this case, this is a new case. Uh, did you receive a notice for the, uh, to explain the violation? Yes, what I the did. The violation is Yes, I did. And did you understand what needed to be done to, to yes, bring it I into did. compliance? Thank you. We'll begin with Officer Clark's testimony to explain how he came to, to inspect your property and, and what he saw. Mr. Clark. Is that on? It's not on. Is the button on? No, that doesn't. Testing. Okay. There we go. Well, Clark City, North Miami Code Compliance. Uh, this case is in reference to the exterior property conditions. Um, I cited the property back in June. At that time, we were given about 90 days to uh, remedy the problem uh, of the mildew stain exterior walls of the building and she's aware of uh, what needed to be done 
Um, I did my best to uh, make them uh, her only do the minimum requirement to abate the violation. And um, she somewhat agreed to it and is just trying to uh, take care of that. Um, I talked to her an extent yesterday, and uh, she, she said she needed more time. But at the time, the present time, um, the property uh, walls um, going to need a little more than cleaning. needs a little painting to the front wall and the east side wall of the property. Right. And um, today, it's not um, in total compliance, and i like to submit the photos for the record. Ms. Plastino, the uh, uh, Mr. Clark has shown you some uh, fo two photographs. Yes. And is this your house? Yes, it is. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> I am reviewing two photographs that were provided by the city code enforcement officer. And um, you indicated that these photographs represent um, fairly and accurately represent your property as it's looking today. Yes. And you understand what the violation is. Yes, I did. Okay. Do you have any questions for the city enforcement officer? No. I just wanted to say, though, if I could, that yes. um, I did take the time yesterday and the day before that to improve on the property as you can see um, I don't know if Mr. Clark had ex the other pictures of how mildewed it was but it looks like it has had a paint job by looking at it now from what I did with the pressure cleaner myself I did my own work and um, it, there's just, just certain stains on that are there that um, I guess it would need special treatment or paint but I'm on disability, and I don't have the money to even afford the paint or I'll hire somebody to work for me to do the work. So I'm in kind of a, a pickle here, you know what I mean? I want to have the house nice. I mean, if there could be any help in that area, I would really appreciate it. Your Honor, if I may, sure. through you, Regine Monasim on behalf of the City Attorney's Office. Ma'am, how much time do you think you need to come into compliance? I don't have the money, so I don't know how much time it would be to gather the money, you know, to do the paint and have the pay the workers. It's not just painting it. It has to be filled in the cracks, you know, all the, it can't just paint over that if you look at it. It's cracks. It, you know, if you're going to do it right, it's got to be done properly. If I may interject, I did also uh, did tell her uh, that she may want to try and apply for the City's paint program, which she she may qualify well, for. So, okay. Did you look into that? Uh, I'm gonna look into it this week, tomorrow. When did when did you express that to her? Um, I, I I think I gave her a flyer. When was that? Point. Do you remember? Um, it wasn't yesterday. It, it probably Day before or so. Uh, maybe a week or two ago. Okay. I, I don't remember exactly, okay. but she, she is about aware a week of ago. Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to make a recommendation that we table this for 30 days to allow, uh, uh, I'm sorry, what's your name again? Ms. Plastino. Ms. Plastino uh, until November 7th to come into compliance. Perhaps tomorrow she said she's going to call in for the paint and, um, and see if that works. If not, then, you know, w can she scrub it down, Mr. Clark, with that? Okay. No, do you, have, like to, you have to get a pressure cleaner? No, she's done. Pressure she's cleaner. done all of that. But um, the thing is, is in certain areas on the wall, it's um, mildew to a point to where she would need to probably use a primer paint mixture to to um, cover it up because you're dealing with white paint and you're trying to cover up black, and sometimes it bleeds. The, it's the bleeding. Mildew bleeds it's back bleeding through. through. Okay. So, so well, she has to have like a two-step process. It's okay. Bleeding well, through. okay. Well, maybe you can go to you know sometimes at Home Depot they have paint that people return and it's like you know discounted price so maybe you can try some of those alternatives but my recommendation if it be your, if it be your pleasure your honor is to table this case uh, until November 7th okay. your honor I'd like to also through you as to the uh, Miss Plastino a question ma'am is is uh, are you living at this property 
Yes, I am. Okay, and others are living also with the property? Just, just my you? granddaughter. Just She's you, 20. And you and your granddaughter. That's okay. it. Thank you. That's all. We just wanted to, to, to ascertain whether the property is uh, owner-occupied or, or a rental property. So no, it's not a rental. All right, thank you. She doesn't even pay me rent, <laughs> the 20-year-old. Thank okay. you. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. Ma'am, if you understand, we will table this matter for 30 days, okay. and um, we will reconvene on November 7th, giving you plenty of opportunity to get this matter resolved. As you heard, the city attorney says you may qualify for the city paint program, so I suggest that you get to it okay. ASAP. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank very you. Nice. Thank you. Uh, we will send you notification to your home address. Okay. About time. thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Next case. The next case is agenda item number forty-two four two, for uh, Marie Petit, whose property is located at one one four four Northwest one hundred twenty third Street. The case is C E I V Y two thousand twelve zero zero one forty four. Uh, Ms. Uh, Code Officer Sanders opened <coughs> this case on June 22nd, 2012. And this case was adjudicated uh, by the magistrate on September 5th, 2012, who set an abatement date of September 18th, 2012, and imposed a fine and maximum rate of $25 a day <coughs> should the property owner not bring it into the compliance. Uh, good evening. Okay. 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 Um, in this case, uh, uh, Your Honor, we're going to have our uh, city translator assist. Can we swear him in? City employee. Uh, would you raise your right hand? Or, or, or in I've already sworn. You're sworn? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, it's a well, different. Well, it's a different. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that? Uh, that you will testify translate. and translate uh, th these proceedings from English to Creole and Creole to English to the best of your ability? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, your name and address for the record, Vunam? No. Okay. <coughs> Mount Petit, 1144 Northwest 123rd Street. Mount Petit, 1144 124th Street. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Sanders, if you would explain to us uh, uh, the nature of the, the status of this case since it's already been adjudicated. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, Code <coughs> Compliance Officer. Um, as of today, compliance has not been met. Since she came over, she already mentioned that she's gonna do put the tag in the car in October. Twenty. On uh, October twentieth. <laughs> okay. That's it. I mean Ma'am, you had okay. She had spoken to you and informed you that she was going to comply in October? Um, she came into the office and I'm understanding she spoke with um, our, our, our secretary and, st and asked for more time, but as I explained to the property owner, it wasn't up to me to give her more time because we've already been presented before the special magistrate last month and they gave her an abatement date of the 18th. So for her to come back and ask for more time if that's what she was wanting to do. But again, I, I stressed to her that her abatement date was September 18th. She is in financial hardship. She has no money to do it, but she's going to do it on the 20th. That's all she said at the beginning. Okay, ma'am, um, from June, you were informed that you were in violation. We are in October. You don't get to determine when you will comply. Since June, she hasn't received any letter uh, to warn her about it. See, when she came on in September, that's when she was aware of it. 
All right. City Attorney, do you have any recommendation? Uh, I just threw you to like to ask a few questions. Sure. Uh, Ma'am, do you live in the property? Yes, I do. Yes, she lives in there. And so you, you're having difficulty removing the car? She has no space to put it. No, no spot to put it. Okay. Ma'am, Your Honor, this is going to be my recommendation at this point to begin to impose fines. Uh, I, my recommendation is that we impose $10 a day, beginning today. So I'm going to go to the day and pay $10 per day. 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 She said if, if she had ten dollars she would collect it, uh, she would like save to go, to get the tag, but she has no money, she can't do it. And she has to pay her way and everything. Ma'am, you were informed or you were advised back in when was this matter heard? In September? September 5th. September 5th that you had until September 18th to comply. That was your abatement date. Here we are today, October 3rd, and nothing has happened. And therefore, I agree with the city attorney. I find that the violations still exist. Um, I um, will impose a fine of $10 per day and you have until October 16th. Is that correct, city attorney? I'm sorry? You, well, the fines will run until she comes into compliance at this point. If you start the fine. If you start running the fine today. Yeah. Then the fine will. starts running today, $10 right. per day. The, the until the matter is resolved. Début okay. 5 septembre, vous êtes au courant de cette situation. Et vous êtes bon jusqu'à 18 septembre pour résoudre le problème. Ou pas, j'en fais. On va faire faire un effort de sens ça. Donc, d'après, c'est à ton nez, on est obligé. Chargé 10 dollars par jour, comment c'est jeudi? Il se passe pour résoudre ça. Ok. Pour Kaila, pour moi, ma paix. Ou bien, je vais payer Kaila encore. Je vais mettre ça sur ma chine. Je vais payer Kaila. Je vais payer Kaila. Je vais payer Kaila. What is more important, paying the weight or paying a car, a car for a tag? He has no husband, you know, he's in she's in financial hardship. So which one, which one is more important, paying your weight or paying for the tag? The situation, is, the situation is really tough for her financially. She is out of breath. Ma'am, maybe you can find ask for some assistance. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Maybe, yeah. All right. Does she understand? She wonder based on the situation, it's really tough for her if you can give her an extension to get that into compliance because it's very expensive uh, to get the new tag. It's going to be about 100 something for her. So if we can give her an extension, that would be helpful. Attorney? She can always do fine mitigation when she was done. Yeah. I mean, ma'am, I... Uh, when, how much... When will you when will you move the car or get, or get a good tag? Move the car? Okay. Wait, wait, wait. What would you like to say? When will you move the car or get a good tag? October 20, as she promised, she will bring the, the tag and show proof everything. Okay. I, I, I <laughs> Your Honor, if you, if you allow me to reconsider my recommendation sure. and allow uh, one last extension until November 7th, 
and if at that time uh, the car is still there, then I will recommend um, increasing the fine to $25. Well, not uh, uh, well, continuing the abatement date because it's already been adjudicated. The abatement date, then the new abatement date would be November 7th. Correct. Okay, a, a, a abatement date extension. See, thank you for your understanding. Okay, okay if I understand it, um, we are continuing it or tabling the case? Continuing the abatement date until November 7th. Okay, at which point? At which we will, point, correct. We will assess the $25 per day um, if she's not in compliance. Ma'am, do you understand that? So get that glass up and say, oh, uh, we need to back up. You watch out, you need to go about, you go near. Okay. You want one? Yes. She understand everything. Okay. This is your last extension. This is the extension you're about. Okay. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Okay. Next case. Madam. Next case. Okay, just a second. I'm sure. Okay, we're ready now. Next case is uh, agenda item number 12, Christopher and Olga Hutnick for the property located at 1060 Northeast 142nd Street, case CEEXP, 2012-00103. This is Miss Christie's case. It's a new case that she opened on May 30th, 2012 regarding the exterior uh, uh, of the residence. I'm sorry, Mr. Graham. What's the number again? Agenda item number 12. Got it. For Christopher and Olga Hutnick. Good evening. Good evening. Would you please state your name and address for the record and your relationship to the property? Chris Hutnick, 1060 Northeast 142nd Street. I am the property owner. Thank you, sir. And uh, you received a notice of violation for, for uh, as cited by the code officer? Yes, I did. To paint the exterior of the property? To pressure clean and paint the exterior. Correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that you understand the violation and what was needed for yes. compliance. Uh, Ms. Christie, if you would please uh, uh, give your testimony on how you came to cite this property. Vita Lynn Christie, code compliance. Um, property was cited back in may in regards to the exterior walls of the property i con i had previously did a courtesy inspection which informed the property owner about the violation came back at a later time cited it um may try to attempt communication a couple of times and gave him the uh, paperwork to the paint for the paint program at our community planning office um, for him to get the house painted. Um, he did apply, but as of today, the house remains the same. And I did meet with him at the property today at about 245. He was attempting to pressure clean, but I guess the, the machine was not working. Sir, do you understand the violation? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. And um, you applied for the paint program? I would like to apply for the paint program, yes. The paperwork that I currently had has been misplaced. We've recently done a complete thorough cleaning of all the papers in the house, and I've lost the application. But I can go down tomorrow and talk to the special programs for the community, I think. I don't know if I will qualify because <laughs> from what I understand, my wife's salary is probably too high and everything's on her. Uh, ma Madam Magistrate, uh, my name is Douglas Hindmarsh. I'm a friend of the Hutnick family. I'm not here as an attorney. I'm here as a friend of the family. Um, I just recently heard about this. I have a uh, uh, chief. Madam City Attorney, everybody knows me. Um, what I would be willing to do is put my stamp on this job. I will be there as a friend. It will be, if you can roll it over, 30 days. November 7th, I believe I heard. There's no reason it couldn't be done. I don't know how the family's finances are. I'm not asking any questions. Madam City Attorney read my mind with the Home Depot paint. And I also have a client that's a painter that has 11 cages of old paint. And Chief, please help me out because I'm a little dated. 
do we still have a pellet and do you need to have a paint permit the answer is yes there's no fee for the permit you just they need to submit a uh, base color and a trim color okay with mr uh, hutnick's understanding that he will go get the permit and apply for some neutral base color uh, my representation as a friend not as an attorney uh, if we could roll it over 30 days it will be pressure washed it will be sealed and if it's not completely painted because of uh, financial reasons then at least the front will be painted to make uh, madam Christie happy enough to say there's been some kind of reasonable due diligence and compliance as of November 7th otherwise you're going to see me in here mr. Hutnick and I will have egg on my face don't make me sorry that I went out on a limb and asked for a favor. So that's what I'm asking for, Madam Magistrate. Your Honor, uh, this, the city has no objections to that, and we would uh, table this case until November 7th to allow uh, Mr. Hutnick, along with his, with his very, very good friend, uh, 30 days. Thank you, Madam City Attorney. All right, sir, you understand <coughs> that we will table this matter for 30 days, and uh, you have up until November 7th to get this matter resolved with God's help okay. not a problem All right mr. Graham yes mr. Hudnick you understand uh, the order what's been explained and yes you understand what needs to be done yes thank you do you have any questions for the magistrate or for Miss Christie not at this time okay as soon as the work is done mr. mr. Hudnick and mr. Hindmarsh you need to call Miss Christie so she can do an inspection mr. Hutnick and close and close I will case. follow up with that not a problem okay thank you for coming tonight Maybe we will send you We'll send you paperwork in the mail. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you very yes, much for your you. time. Thank you. Good to see you. Okay, um, Ms. Magistrate, if you're ready, I'll call the next Yes, case. please. Okay, agenda item number 64, William and Diane DeShazor. I'm sorry if I killed the pronunciation, but Perfecto. thank you. Uh, this is uh, for the property located at 12295 Northwest Fourth Avenue, KCEEXP 2012-00133. This is a new case cited by uh, Code Officer Wilcox, who opened the case on July 11, 2012, to, um, to paint or pressure clean the roof by the next inspection date. Good evening, folks. If you would please identify yourselves by name and your relation, your address and relationship uh, to the my property. Name, my name is William DeSager. I'm the owner of the house. Hi, Diane DeSager, co-owner. Thank you very much. Uh, do you understand the uh, nature of the violation? Yes, I do. Okay, do you understand what has had to be done in order to have it complied? Right. Okay, thank you. We're going to let uh, Officer Wilcox tell us how he came to inspect your property. Okay. And then you'll have an opportunity to ask him any questions you have and right. or make a statement to the magistrate. Mr. Wilcox. Uh, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Miami, Code Compliance. Um, this violation was, was observed. July 11, 2012. Um, I posted the property with a notice to appear. Notice to appear September 21st, 2012. Um, this is a exterior dirty roof violation. Um, I did speak with the property owner on a few occasions. Um, they needed an extension of time. I granted them time so for at least uh, two extensions. That probably added up to maybe like 30 days. Um, they, um, they stated that they was going through a financial hardship at the time, and they just requested more time. Um, I'm going to submit the photos into record. Mr. DeSager, uh, Mr. Uh, Code Officer Wilcox showed you pictures right. of, of a house. This is your house? Right, yes. Thank you. I received copies of two photographs um, dated um, October 2nd, 2012. Uh, Mr. And Wilcox. You're in I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Wilcox, any further testimony? No. Okay, thank you, Mr. DeSajur. Do you have any questions for our Code Officer Wilcox? Well, I'd like to tell him thank you for the, the time he gave me. And thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. What, if anything, have you done to try to resolve this problem? Uh, we really didn't have a chance to do anything. When it first started, uh, we lost income in those two months. Uh, my wife is a school teacher. 
she only worked 10 months at that at that time uh, her time was up and she had it uh, and she was off for two months plus I lost some income too at that time so now we just starting to put things together so we want to try to get more time to try to get that done it's pretty expensive to get that done we called some people the, the lowest price we got was four hundred dollars so I was listening to your uh, paint program you got or whatever you have. I like to try to uh, qualify for that because I got stuff here that showing I really don't have money to do it. Uh, I got my bank statements and everything and my check stubs. Uh, it's going to take me at least a couple of months to try to get that kind of money up because I'm just started getting financed back again after 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 those two months I'm not having any. So. That's what I got to say about that. <coughs> your Honor, yes. Uh, if it be your pleasure, it's the city attorney's recommendation that this, since this is a new case and new violation, that we table it for 30 days to allow uh, them to come into compliance and uh, perhaps look into some other means to comply. All right. Um, I understand. I know you said you want a couple of months, but we're going to table this matter for 30 days. Okay. And so you have between now and... Um, well, you have 30 days okay. to get this matter resolved. Okay. So do what you need to do. Otherwise, when you come back, there will be fines. All right. I'd like to try to get hold to this uh, uh, thing you got going on, the paint. The paint right. program. Is there a paint program? Maybe we you can, can speak to the code. If you would, if you would speak, speak, excuse me, if you would speak to Code Officer Wilcox. Okay. All right. Uh, after after this case is right. uh, is done, you could just go outside, and he'll give you information on who to contact in the city. Okay, well, thank you right. so much. And we and try thank, to get this thing thank, done. Thank you for coming. Thank we you. will send you further information in All the right. mail. Thank okay. you. Thank you Have for coming. Evening. Evening. Thank you. You too, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Your Honor, if you're ready, I'll, we'll proceed with the next case. Yes. Okay, the next case is agenda item 67. Uh, item 67, uh, Jeanette Bowes uh, for the property at 655 Northeast 131st Street, KCETRA 2012-00001. This is a new case cited by myself on August 17, 2012. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Janet Bowesy. The property is 655, not this 131st Street. Thank you, Ms. Bosey. Ms. Bosey, did you receive the notice in the mail to explain to you the, the violation yes. on your property? And you under, did you understand what you needed to do to, Ye to yes. resolve the violation? Yes, I okay. did what they told me to do. They told me I, s I have to get the permit, and I went there. They gave me the permit to okay. remove the tree. All right. Um, let, uh, let me start by explaining what, what, what happened. Uh, Your Honor? Uh, back on uh, August 17th, I was informed that there was a live oak tree that was damaged beyond repair without a permit on uh, the property at 657 Northeast 131st Street. According to the Dade County property records, the property is owned uh, by Jeanette Bossy. Uh, ownership determined through by uh, the re uh, review of that uh, property appraiser's uh, information. Uh, the tree canopy was destroyed and uh, the uh, city's uh, parks department uh, informed us that uh, Ms. Bosey would have to uh, replace the tree canopy by planting seven shade trees or 12 palm trees um, with, uh, that are number one quality in Florida that have a one-year guarantee. Uh, in lieu of that, if she chose not to replace the trees, then she would have to remit to the city to the tree fund, tree replacement fund, the sum of $2,100. I would submit the letter that we sent to Ms. Bosey on August 17th and to evidence at this time. Yes, please. And, uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Do you remember receiving this letter? No, this not, that this, not that this one. Okay. They said what? They gave me the authorization to cut the tree, but I couldn't um, Speak on the, <coughs> ma'am, I can't hear yes, you. Yes, they, they said they, I, I um, filled the paper to get the, uh, the permit to cut the tree. They said it's, uh, it's okay. They give me six months to remove the tree. To remove the tree. They sent me the give me the permit to remove the tree. Okay. Do you have a copy of what she's talking about, Mr. Allen? Um, no, but what we did is uh, we have an affidavit of service that on uh, August 20, 2000, 
12 that the notice of violation and the tree litter that you were you have in your hand was posted at the property by code officer Ed Fitzell. I have the affidavit of service, which I'll enter into evidence at this time. The instructions informing the property owner that she had to uh, to uh, replace the tree canopy within 30 days or pay the into the city's tree replacement fund mm -hmm. was a part of the notice of violation, which I also submitted this time. Maybe they give something different because the tree they give the, the paper that say has six months to remove the tree, and now they have something else. Okay, the building and zoning department uh, when when if you go there to the building and zoning department, they'll tell you we'll give you a permit and give you six months to do something. However, the tree replacement requirement was had to be done within 30 days. The the code section is is different from the building and zoning's regulations. Uh, our letters nowhere. Uh, I mean, in the letter, yes, the tree was damaged beyond repair, and I'd like to introduce the, the photos into evidence at this time of the tree and the way it was cut to show that it did have to be removed. Okay. Just for the record, I've received a notice of violation and a letter that was addressed to Miss Bossy, yes. August 17, yes, 2012. When I was not there, my friend told me, you can help me to find somebody to help me to cut the tree. But I was not there when they cut the tree. When okay. I came back, I found the tree cut like that. All right, ma'am, give me one second. An affidavit of service, I have a copy. I'm also reviewing um, photographs that were taken um, on August 7th, 2012. You have indicated that you have a different letter. You, you yes, have your you different the can I Can I see that, please? Uh, Your Honor, uh, Ms. Bosey has uh, presented a building permit from the City of North Miami Building Department. It's a, uh, a tree uh, a permit to remove one tree. This is dated, uh, issued on September 18, 2012, after the fact, after the, the, the violation was cited and after the letters were mailed to her. Okay. Uh, I, I just want clarification. Now, after she received this, she went down to the building um, department and they gave her this. A building permit, correct, to remove okay. the tree, which was already cut down. I'm trying to understand where the confusion could be. The confusion's in the building department because the citation was that the, the tree was damaged beyond repair without a permit, so she had to replace the tree canopy per the, the attached instructions or pay into the tree fund. So to replace the tree canopy, you have to purchase new trees or pay the city to do that for you. Okay. Right. My, the, my concern is this, is um, if this lady went down to the building department and this is what they have told her, mm -hmm that she had six months to comply um, you know I'm assuming she's not well versed on what needs to be done um, city attorney what do you recommend because yeah I'm I'm a little concerned that she was given conflicting or misinformation so you know I I'd be more than happy to recommend uh, that this be tabled um, I mean is it it was this has not been adjudicated correct no this is a this new is case a new and case. we at this point uh, I would uh, basically ask uh, Miss Bose how much time she needs to be able to do this to be able to uh, uh, to replace the tree canopy mm -hmm. and you said the alternative is to pay twenty one hundred dollars to the city Wow Okay. Isn't there isn't there a tree fund or, or something? That's the tree fund. She has to pay into the tree fund for the city to purchase the, the oh, tr tree replacement the trees. Right. Uh, I have no objection uh, if, if Ms. Bozy needs more time to comply, but uh, th the time should be reasonable. I mean, once the tree is gone, she has to either replant new trees mm -hmm. or pay into the tree fund. And the choice is hers. Ma'am, do you understand? Yes, I do because I'm going to remove the old trees and uh, the part we left. 
I'm going to remove it and plant the, plant the new tree there. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, great. How long do you need to do that? Oh, maybe on two, three months. I can do it. Yeah, well, I have no we objection of giving her. A I have no objection. Three, whatever, two months, three I, months. I, I, I would, yeah. I would uh, recommend uh, to the um, city attorney uh, that we would maybe bring this back January 2nd, which would be 90, yeah. you know, uh, th uh, three months on the third hearing calendar. It should be sufficient time to finish the work of removing the tree and then make a decision to either plant the replacement trees or to pay into the city's tree fund. So. Yeah, uh, I, would, I would offer that's that that's as the city a attorney's recommendation. So well. there would be no additional cost to Ms. Bosey at this time. Great. Ma'am, do you understand? I do. Okay. You have till January 2nd. Okay. Okay. So please remedy the problem. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Paper, thank you for coming tonight. Okay, thank you, we will send you some information in the next. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, is there anyone else here for a case tonight? No? Okay, at this point, you are, uh, uh, I would say, uh, first I want to, uh, uh, if, if, if it's your pleasure, <laughs> we will excuse our translator and thank Officer John Ferris from the North Miami Police Department for being our, our protector here this evening. Thank you, John. Thank you. We appreciate you. Seeing there are no other property owners, violators, attorneys, or any other people representing the remainder of the cases. That means I'm gone too. And I'll thank our city <laughs> attorney for her presence. And if it's thank your, you. your will and pleasure, we will continue the rest of the cases ex parte. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just going to call them in order if anyone has any objection. No? Okay. No, no. We'll go back, start going uh, back towards the beginning of the calendar with agenda item number three. Mm -hmm. Ada Bauer, whose property is 12885 Northwest 16th Avenue, KCFAW 2012-00046, Ms. Sanders. Uh, this is a continued case which was open on March 27, 2012, ab adjudicated on September 5, 2012, with an abatement date of September 18, 2012, and a fine rate set at $25 a day for failure to comply, Ms. Sanders. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, co-compliance officer. As of today, roughly 2 o'clock, compliance has not been met. And through you to Ms. Sanders, uh, Ms. Sanders, when was this property posted with a notice to appear for tonight's hearing? I'm sure and I posted the property on the I'm sorry um let me look I'm sorry okay I'm sorry the 24th of September I'm sure and I posted it at 3 35 p.m. thank you uh, the city's going to recommend since this case has already been uh, presented adjudicated and uh, a finding in favor of the city and since the property owner uh, is not here to offer any testimony as to why a fine should not be imposed at this time the city is seeking that a fine be imposed today um, uh, starting today in the amount of $25 per day until complied okay great I do see find that there was good notice uh, or proper notice and um, the owner failed to appear and so fine is imposed at $25 per day starting today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sanders. All right, the next is Mr. Wilcox's case, agenda item number seven. Uh, for uh, uh, the property owner is Bernadette Florinard, who owns a property, a non homestead property at 14030 Northwest 5th Avenue, KCEBMP 2012 0035. Uh, this is a case that's already been adjudicated. Mr. Wilcox opened the case on March 8, 2012. Uh, it was adjudicated on June 6, 2012, and uh, um, an abatement date of July 17, 2012 was ordered. The case was again heard on August 1st, and the abatement date was extended at that hearing until September 18th. Uh, no fine was uh, amount was uh, 
was offered at any of the uh, the prior hearings. Mr. Wilcox will give testimony as to the status of this violation, which is building without permits to uh, obtain and uh, permits for illegal construction on the on the home regarding windows, doors, and interior renovations. Mr. Wilcox. Um, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Miami Code Compliance. Uh, the property was posted September 20, 2012. And I have a green card on file here. Um, the status of the property is that they have a pro process number on file for the windows and doors. Um, but the permit was, has not been issued as of yet. So there's no compliance as of now, as of today. But they do have a process number for the permit on file. Uh, through you to Mr. Wilcox. Mr. Wilcox, uh, when was this property posted with a notice to appear for tonight's hearing? Um, as I said, um, September 20th. Thank you. What does the city recommend? Okay. Um, do you have any more testimony, Mr. Wilcox? No. Thank you. Uh, the city's position is that since this pro this case has already been adjudicated and a finding in favor of the city at a prior hearing, and since the property owner is not present to offer any uh, evidence as to why uh, she has not obtained a building permit, uh, the city would recommend that a fine be imposed at this time starting today. Um, the fine amount would be at the discretion of the magistrate. Okay, I find that the violation still exists. Um, there was proper notice. The homeowner failed to appear or is not present and um, will issue a fine of $50 per day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Next case is agenda item number nine, Ivy Kirsten's case against Betty Walker, whose property is located at 2140 Hibiscus Circle, case CEJNK 2012-00107. This is a new case opened by Mr. Kirsten, uh, Code Officer Kirsten, on August 10, 2012, to remove broken mirrors, washing machines, and other items from the rear yard. Uh, Mr. Kirsten. I'm sorry, which number is this? Item nine. Okay. Item number nine. Got it. Good evening, Code Officer Ivy Kears from the City of North Miami Police Department. This is a new case. Um, I cited this property um, back on August 10th. I left a courtesy letter for the property owner. Um, then um, I went back and reinspected the property on August 17th, sent out a violation letter. Um, came back on August 29th. There was still no compliance. Then um, I proceeded to send a notice to appear. Uh, the property was posted on September 20th at 1155 a.m. I'd like to submit the uh, pictures for the record. Yes. Thank you. And this is a homesteaded property. Thank you. I'm looking at photographs um, that were taken on October 1st, 2012, and showing um, all the debris in the back of the house. Yeah. And you indicated as of today, this has not been resolved. No, no it has not. Um, what through, does through, you through you to Mr. Kirsten. Mr. Kirsten, when did you post the property for the notice to appear for this hearing? September 20th. Thank it, you. It. What does the city attorney recommend? Uh, the city's position is since this is a new case and mm -hmm. since uh, Mr. Kirsten has documented uh, the fact that junk does exist on the property in violation of city code, then since the property is not here to offer any evidence to the contrary, the city would would uh, ask uh, the magistrate to uh, issue a finding that the violation does exist at the property and that an, an abatement date, the shortest possible abatement date of November 7th be, uh, be ordered at this time and that the, you set a fine amount uh, not to exceed a maximum fine um, per day should it not be complied by the abatement date of November 7th. Um, I do find there good notice. I do find the violation still exists. Um, the proper property owner failed to appear. And um, we will have fines at $25 per day. 
starting today, correct? Uh, actually, we will, that will be a fine that you can impose at uh, the next hearing should they fail to abate the violation by November 7th. Okay. So, so we will have the abatement date of November 7th. Thank and you. to the extent that it's not complied with, it'll be $25 per day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Next case will be agenda item number 10 from uh, Mr. Wilcox's case against uh, Carolyn L. Wallace for the property located at 400 Northwest 135th Street, case CEIVY 2012 00176. This is a new case cited by, uh, opened by Mr. Wilcox on uh, August 8, 2012 uh, for a, f a black Ford or Cadillac located behind the property that uh, appears to be inoperable. Mr. Wilcox. Uh, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Miami Code Compliance. Uh, the property was posted with notice to appear September 20, 2012. Um, I observed this violation on August 8, 2012. Um, this is for an inoperable vehicle in the rear of the property. Have flat tires, uh, vegetation underneath, and the other items underneath the vehicle. I will, uh, I will submit the photos into record. Okay, and Mr. Wilcox, if you would uh, indicate when you get the file back or the day you posted the property for today's hearing. September 20, 2012. Thank you. Okay, I've been presented with photographs of the, um, what is it, the Cadillac? Yes, okay. Cadillac, photo Cadillac. And the photograph is dated um, October 2nd, 2012. And um, when was the last time you went on the property? On um, that day of the photo, October 2nd. Okay. And as of October 2nd, the, it was still parked um, there. Therefore, I find that notice was proper. Um, the homeowner failed to appear. The violation still exists as of 10-2. 2012 um, we will have the abatement date is it November 7th yes okay the property owner shall have um, until November 7th to remedy the situation and to the extent that it's not resolved will impose a fine of $25 per day thank you yeah okay thank you mr. Wilcox Next case is agenda item number 13 on the Sanders case against Countrywide Home Loans Incorporated for a property at 12385 Northwest 17th Avenue, uh, case CEIVY uh, 2012 00173, a new case uh, opened by Ms. Sanders on August 3rd, 2012 for a derelict vehicle, a four-door silver or gray Volkswagen on the south side of the property with flat tires and overgrowth. Uh, Ms. Sanders. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer. As already stated, this is a case for an inoperable vehicle that's located on the property. It was initially cited on um, August 3rd of this year. Um, didn't get a response. Went back to the property August 30th. Um, left a notice. Still didn't get any contact. Went back no, um, September 11th. Back again on September 18th. I did speak with a gentleman from the bank. Um, who stated that it was tenants there and foreclosure was starting, but um, to go ahead and proceed with the hearing. So, you know, as of today, when I went back to the property, the vehicle still remained. I have pictures if you would like to see. Yes, please. seeing photographs that were taken on um, October 3rd, 2012 of the vehicle and you indicated that you gave notice on? Um, yes, I hand delivered the notice to the tenant on um, September 21st. Yeah. Um, I have a question. In this situation, it, who remedies um, this situation? Is it the tenant or is it the, the bank? Uh, actually, one, either one. 
uh, the, the burden of responsibility falls on the property owner because if the tenant fails to comply, then any fines or liens imposed fall on the property. The violation runs with the land, not specifically with the tenant. Okay. So what we do in these cases, we notify and uh, order and post uh, post the order at the home. We mail the notice uh, and the order to the bank at the <laughs> bank's address. And, uh, and according to Dade, plus you, according to Dade County property records, the bank has listed the mailing official mailing address for for countrywide home loans to be the same address of the property where the violations occurring. So the burden is on them and or their tenant. Okay, given that I heard testimony from the code enforcement officer that she did in fact make contact with the bank and they indicated to her that we can go forward with the hearing. Having mm -hmm. said that, no one is present here tonight and given good notice and the fact that the violations still exist as of um, October. As today. As of today, today, the violations still exist. Um, we find in favor of the city and um, given the abatement date of November 7th and fines in the amount of $50 per day. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Sanders has the next case, which is agenda item number 14 against uh, uh, Damian Sanchez, whose property is located at 1565 Northwest 126th Street, KCEJ and K2012-00097, a new case opened by Ms. Sanders on July 12, 2012, for buckets, tires, wood, bags, other trash and debris, and miscellaneous items um, uh, that need to be cleaned up or removed from the property. Uh, Ms. Sanders. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, Code Compliance Officer. As already stated, this is a case for um, junk in or miscellaneous items that are scattered around the property. I first noted the violation back in July of this year, um, looking as though the property was vacant, but I am now seeing activity there, here and there, um, at least a, a black truck that's been there. But I have been back to the property on, I'm showing here, July 23rd, August 6th. September 17th. I haven't literally made any contact with um, anyone, but I do again see that notices have been removed from the fence and there has been a black truck there. But as of today, the violation still remains. There's still miscellaneous items um, scattered around the property. If you would like to see pictures, um, I do have them to show. Yes, please. Okay. And for the record, Ms. Sanders uh, posted the property for the notice of hearing for today's hearing on 9-21-2012. Viewing um, photographs of um, debris or junk in the back of the property, uh, photographs dated October 3rd, 2012. Showing good notice and um, the property owner fails to appear, um, seeing that the violation still exists as of today, will give a, an abatement date of November 7th okay. and um, fines in the amount of $25 per day. Are we assessing costs? Uh, we assess costs routinely uh, unless you uh, reduce or waive them. A hundred dollars. It's it's automatic unless you you uh, you change that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go on to. The, I'll leave my cases to the end so the officers get out. Um, we're going to go to agenda item 17 for Mr. Kearson. Uh, for the uh, for the, uh, a property of Elia Isidron for his, the pro property located at 2010. Keystone Boulevard, KCEFAW, 2012-00075. This case was opened by Mr. Kearson on July 9, 2012. It was adjudicated on September 5, 2012, and with an abatement date of September 18, 2012, and a fine of $50 a day if it's not complied. Uh, Mr. Kearson will give a report on the status of the case. Mr. Kearson. Code Officer Ivy Kearson, City of North Miami Police Department. 
as of today there has been no compliance the fence remains in the same condition the property was posted on september 20th at 10:28 a.m and this is a vacant property and it is not homesteaded thank you mr kirsten and it is vacant okay um you Would understand you recommend you yes. when, a, when the property is vacant uh property is vacant what we do is we mail mail the uh, send the mail to the last known address of the property owner we also post the the front door of the property with the notice uh to appear as well as notice of violation um mm -hmm. We post it uh, according to Florida statute to the last known address in the Dade County Property Appraisers Database. Okay. Um, you indicated you were there last? Today. Today. Okay. Did you take any photographs? Um, I did, but um, of uh, where it looks today. I have pictures if you want to see them, but um, it's, it's in the same condition Mr. as it was. Mr. Kerrison, what is the date of the photos that you have on your in your case file? Um, when were they taken? September 5th. And um, it is your testimony that when you return there today, it's in the same condition exact as it was? Exact same condition. Okay. Mr. Kerrison, would you submit those to the magistrate yes. for review? Thank yes. you. Mr. Kirsten, this appears to be a wood fence. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I am looking at photographs that were taken in um, September, September 5th, 2012, of a wooden fence in the back of the house. And um, it is the officer's testimony that this is in the same condition that it was on September 5th, 2012. And you said you were you noticed the property September September twentieth. Okay. Um, I find good notice. I find there the violations still exist. And um, you said it was adjudicated back in September. Yes, right? this was adjudicated September fifth with abatement date of September eighteenth, which has passed. Okay, so we'll just will um, assess the fines of fifty dollars per day that's what okay okay and that will start today correct thank you okay we're moving on to the next case which is miss christie's case against faye l burke whose property is located at one two two zero zero northeast 11th court the case is ceexp 2012 uh, miss christie opened this case back in may 29 2012 and uh, the case was adjudicated in favor of the city on September 5th, 2012, with the abatement date set of September 18, 2012, and a five, uh, $50 a day if not complied by the abatement date. Okay. Ms. Christie will give t testimony tonight as to the status of this case. Ms. Christie. Fidel and Christie, code compliance. As of today at 315 when I revisited the property, there has been no changes. The green card or certified mail was sent out on the 24th and the property posted on the 23rd with notice to appear for this hearing. I do have current pictures of today if you wish to read. Yes, please. See that. Thank you. Looking at photographs that were taken today, 10-3-2012 of the property. Um, and it, is it in the same condition that, that it was when you were there last? Exact same. Okay. And I find there was good notice and the property owner failed to appear. This matter has already been adjudicated and a fine of fifty dollars per day has been assessed starting today thank you 
Moving on, we'll go with uh, uh, one of uh, a case cited by Mr. Wilcox against Henry and Coral Scott, or it's the estate of, for the property of 13715 Northwest 3rd Avenue, KCEFAW 2012-00073. Uh, Mr. Wilcox opened the case on June 28, 2012. The case was adjudicated uh, on uh, September uh, 5th. 2012 where a finding was issued in favor of the city with an abatement date of September 8, 2012 and a fine rate was set at $25 a day for failure to comply by the abatement date. Mr. Wilcox will give a testimony as to the status of this case, Mr. Wilcox. Can I have the number again, please? Agenda item 22 to be followed by 23, a companion case. Got it. Mr. Wilcox. Um, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Memory Coal Compliance. This, um, there's, there, there's no compliance on the property because this is an abandoned property. Um, I'm going to submit the photos into record. The property was posted with notice to appear for on September 20, 2012. Submit the photos to record, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, for the record, these photos were dated today. looking at photographs that are dated 10 3 2012 and is it in the same condition as it was um, when you were back there you said in May yes okay and when did you notice the property for today's hearing September 20 2012 I find there was proper notice and the uh, homeowners felt to repeat. Oh, it's vacant, correct? Yes, correct. it's vacant. Okay. Um, that the violation still exists. Uh, abatement date was September 18th, 2012. Fine was assessed at $25 per day starting today. Thank you. We have a companion case to this one, uh, which will be agenda item number 23. Uh, against Henry and Coral Scott, the estate of, at, for the same property, 13715 Northwest 3rd Avenue, KCMHO, 2012-00048. Mr. Wilcox cited this property on June 28, 2012, to repair or secure the front window. Uh, the case was adjudicated on in favor of the city on September 5, 2012, with an abatement date of September 18, 2012, and a fine of $50 a day if not complied by the abatement date. Mr. Wilcox, a good testimony on the status of, the status of this case, Mr. Wilcox. Uh, yes, Officer Wilcox, City of North Memory Coal Compliance. The status of this property still remains in the same conditions, broken windows. Um, the property was posted with notice to appear September 20, 2012. This property is abandoned, vacant. Submit the photos to record. And for the record, Mr. Wilcox took the photo, uh, the f uh, photos that you're going to see, uh, one photo that was dated today. And it's in the same condition as it was back in June 28. Correct? Yes. Okay, I find that there was proper notice. Um, homeowner failed to appear. The violation still exists. Um, abatement date was September 18, 2012. Fine was assessed at $50 starting today. Thank you. Okay, we'll now go to a uh, case cited by Ms. Sanders. Okay, good night. Thank, Thank you. you. The case cited by Ms. Sanders against uh, Julie Ann L uh, Luterman for the property located at 1270 Northwest 123rd Street, KCEMHO MHO 2012-00039. Uh, this is a new case opened by Ms. Sanders on May 31st, 2012. Uh, and this was uh, an unsecured garage and broken windows at the rear of the house that need to be secured. Uh, Ms. Sanders. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer. As already stated, this is a violation of the minimum housing openings for a 
door that's located on the west side of the property um, that needs to be properly secured. This violation was brought to my attention by um, actually the police department. Um, a complaint came in that the door was open and upon inspecting the property back in July, um, I, did, I did indeed find that um, the violation exists. I've posted the property a couple of times. I do note that the property is vacant. The city has been out there quite a few times to at least try to secure it and cut the property and do a little maintenance here and there. But noting that the property is vacant, no activity has taken place and the violation still exists. If you would like, I could show you pictures um, to show you what the property looks like or the door, you know, being ajar. Yes. And as Mr. Graham is looking, because I'm sure he's going to ask, um, I'm noting that the property was posted on September 21st. And also, for the record, the photos were taken today. Thank you. Thank you. And it's in the same condition as it was back in July when you visited the property? Yes. Um, upon looking at the different pictures, it's, um, it's one day that there's a couple of data for today, but I do have when I posted the property back on the 21st and when I first... Um, inspected the property but yes it's still in the same condition okay your honor seeing this is a new case uh the city is seeking a finding in favor of the city and abatement date of november 7th okay i find that the um violation does exist find proper notice and um we will give until november 7th to remedy the problem otherwise we will assess fine at $25 per day thank you now go to a case cited by code officer Kirsten against uh, uh, Karina a Lopez who owns a property at 2210 Northeast 121st Street case CEMHO 2012-00051 this is a new case opened by mr. Kirsten on July 9 2012 to repair the dilapidated overhang a portion of the roof. Mr. Kirsten. Code Officer Ivy Kirsten, City of North Miami Police Department. This property was initially cited back on July 9th. Um, I left a courtesy notice for the uh, property. Um, then I went back and re-inspected the property on the 17th of July, sent the violation notice to the property owner. Um, there was no change in the condition of the roof. Then for I sent out the um, notice to appear and posted the notice to appear on the property on September 20th at 1233 p.m. I'd like to uh, submit the uh, pictures and file for the record. Okay, I'm reviewing photographs that were taken in on October 1st, 2012. Let me ask you something. Um, did you say the property is vacant or is there anyone no, living? No, the property is vacant and it is not homestead. Okay. Um, this is dangerous stuff. Have you seen this, Mr. Graham? Have you seen the photograph? Yeah, it's only a... a piece of wood that's propping that actual overhang up. So okay. it basically can fall at any time. And yes. if someone were unexpectedly to, you know, go there, maybe the mailman or, or, or a child, it's it poses a great danger. A, yes. qu a question, Your Honor, through you to Mr. Kirsten. Has uh, the building official of the city been made aware of this particular um, violation? No, he has not. Okay. So this presents a life safety uh, a problem at this property. Yes. What does the city recommend? Uh, uh, the, c the city is recommending that, uh, and Mr. Kirsten, when did you post the property with the notice? September 20th. Thank you. 
since the uh, the city has presented the case and, and provided substantial evidence that a violation exists at the property and that it constitutes a life safety problem and since the property owner is not present to give any testimony to contrary to contrary to mr. Kirsten's testimony sick city is recommending that uh, you issue a finding in favor of the city that a violation exists and that it should be abated by November 7, 2012 and uh, should it not be abated by then you would set a, f a fine uh, per day until uh, it is complied. Okay, I find good notice. I find that the violation exists. Um, the owner is not present to give um, any testimony to the contrary. Um, we have the ab abatement date of November 7th to remedy the situation. Otherwise, we will assess $100 per day fine. This is a serious condition. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we're now going to continue with Mr. Kirsten with his case against uh, Lisa Pritzel, who ha owns the property at 2105 North Hibiscus Drive, KCEBLR 2012-00050. Uh, Mr. Kirsten opened the case on July 6, 2012 for uh, not having uh, building address numbers on the building that are visible from, from the city right away. Uh, the case was adjudicated in favor of the city on September 5, 2012 and the abatement date of September 18th and a fine of $25 a day if should it not, uh, fa be, fail to comply by the abatement date. Mr. Kirsten. Code Officer Ivy Kirsten, City of North Miami Police Department. Um, there's still no compliance. I was out to the property this um, earlier today. The property is in the same condition as the pictures that I'm going to submit to you that I, t that I took back on September 5th. The property was posted on September 20th, 2012 at 11.51 a.m. And this is a vacant property that is not homesteaded. Thank you. I'm looking at photographs that were taken in um, September 2012, September 9th, um, September 5th, I'm sorry, 2012. And is it in the same condition um, as you say, as you saw it today? Yes. Okay. And the matter has already been adjudicated. I find good notice. I find the violation still exists. And um, the abatement date was September 18th fine is assessed at $25 per day starting today. Thank you. Okay. Once again, so Marie Allure uh, Dynasty, who owns the property at 1430 Northwest 130 uh, 20th Street, 120 Street, <coughs> and CEZP 2012 uh, This case was opened by Ms. Sanders on a April 14, 2012. It was uh, adjudicated in favor of the city on September 5th. And the abatement date is set at uh, September 18, 2012. The fine was set at $200 per day if not complied. Ms. Sanders will give us a report on the status of this case. Um, Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, co compliance officer. Um, as of today, upon driving, up, uh, driving um, inspecting the property, it, it looks to be still in non compliance. Um, there's still a chain on the gate. Um, it looked like the window was slightly open, but I was truly, you know, to be honest, unable to verify anything, but, you know, it could possibly still be occupied by, um, both tenants. But I want to make sure I get on testimony that, you know, that I was unable to verify because, you know, I can't get to the back of the property to see if the gentleman in the rear still lives back there. Go ahead. Okay. Under the circumstances, uh, and since uh, our code officer was able to to perform the inspection necessary to uh, uh, make a positive determination that the uh, property owner is still in violation of having multiple families in a single family residence, I would suggest that this case be tabled to the November seventh hearing calendar to give Miss Sanders sufficient time between now and then 
to make contact with the property owner and or tenants and or uh, be able to go get on the property from uh, neighboring property to see if she can uh, make a determination. I, I would I would definitely try my best. Yes. Okay. Then that would be the recommendation that this this case be tabled to November seventh. Okay. So th we will table the case till November seventh. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go back to Mr. Kearson for his case against Mary Dillon, who owns the property at 2025 Keystone Boulevard, KCEPOM 2012-00029. Mr. Kearson opened the case on July 7, 2012 for the property owner to restore the water clarity in the pool or cover it. Case was ruled in favor of the city and adjudicated on September 5, 2012, with an abatement date of September 18, 2012, and a fine set at $100 a day if not complied. So we'll hear testimony tonight from Mr. Kearson on the status of this case. Mr. Kearson. Code Officer Ivy Kearson, City of North Miami Police Department. Um, this property uh, was inspected again today, and it is in the same condition. Um, this is a vacant home. It is not homesteaded. The property was posted with a notice to appear on September 20th at 10, 19 a.m. I would like to submit the uh, pictures. And I took on the day of, uh, on the day of, 8 30 okay I'm looking at photographs that were taken in on October 30 of 2012 and it is the officer's August. testimony that it the uh, pool is in the same condition today as it was back on August, August. 30th um, 2012 and you said notice was posted back in September 20th yes ma'am okay you said the property is also vacant correct yes all right, I find that um, the violation still exists. The abatement date was no, um, September 18th. And as of today, the violation still exists. Notice was proper. And um, homeowner fails to appear assessing fines in the amount of $100 per day. Starting today? Starting today. Thank you. All right, uh, we're now going to go to a case uh, of Miss Christie, who is uh, cited Walter and Mary Wright, who owns a property at 1320 Northeast 138th Street, KCEEXP 2012-00018. A new case cited, opened by Miss Christie on June 20th, 2012, uh, for exterior main residence. A white roof shows signs of dirt buildup, dark gray in color, and the property owners require to clean and paint the roof. Miss Christie. Vita Lynn Christie, code compliance. Um, as stated, the property was uh, inspected and cited back in June. Um, after a few inspection and no contact made with the property owner, notice to appear um, for this hearing was posted at the property on 923 at 125. Green card sent to the property. And as of today at 307, inspection pictures taken there has been no changes at the property can i see the pictures please okay. uh, please take note that the photos were taken today at 307. this is a new case you said right I am looking at photographs that were taken today, and you indicated that it is the same condition as it was back in June. Yes. Okay, I find in favor of the city, I find the violation still exists. Um, notice is proper. The homeowners failed to appear. Um, 
we will give the an assessment date of November 7th at which time we will assess fines in the amount of $25 per day if the case is not remedied. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now go to a case cited by Mr. Kearson against Wellington Burroughs at 1835 Alamanda Drive, CEMIS 2012-00025. This is a new case opened by Mr. Kearson on September 1st, 2012. Uh, because the exterior of the property has to be kept free from hellfire and, and accident hazards. Mr. Kearson. Code Officer Ivy Kearson, City of North Miami P Police Department. This is a new case. This is, um, this, this property um, has a bit of a history and um, I ask that you just let me embellish for a minute. Um, sure. This, this house, uh, uh, the property they uh, it had a house that caught on fire several years ago, and uh, our building official had the the remaining portions of the house um, knocked down, but there's still portions of it that remain. the The property is vacant. The property is inhabitable. There's a pool on the in the back of the property that is that is green and it's infested. The 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 pool the property itself has a wooden fence that you'll see in the pictures that I'm going to submit to you that actually prevents you from gaining access onto the property. But because of the overall condition of the property, the neighbors are complaining. I have um, also, you'll see uh, some emails from um, uh, property owners. Actually, there's one of the residents that live directly behind the property. He's complaining about it constantly. He's um, he sent in his own pictures, which better depict the condition of it. And um, the property was posted on September 20th at 10:34 a.m. And like I said before, this property is vacant. It's a vacant, abandoned property, and it is not homestead. And I'd like to uh, submit the pictures for the record. Also, this this property is a haven for all type of vermin, uh, raccoons, snakes, yep. um, anything that can probably live back there is living back there. <laughs> <laughs> Former city council. Okay, I'm I'm reviewing photographs that were taken on November first, twenty twelve. Um, several photographs um, dated today. And you are indicating that it is a vac it is a, a vacant property and it's in the same condition as it was when you first sighted yes. the property. Yes. Okay. I find the violation still exists. I find in favor of the city. I find that notice was proper and that the homeowners failed to appear. Um they have until November 7th to remedy the situation. Otherwise, we will assess fines at $50 per day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to go now to Ms. Sanders' case against uh, Yvette and Ernest uh, Labissiere at 1635 Northwest 135th Street. 122nd Street, KCEADS 2012-00063. New case opened by Ms. Sanders on June 1st, 2012 for wood boards, water dispensers, sink, bricks, and other items uh, that need to be removed from the property. Uh, Ms. Sanders. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer. As already stated, this is a case of um, miscellaneous items that are being stored outside the property. Um, it's been initially cited back in June of uh, of this year. Um, honestly, I, I assume it must have got lost in the system because I don't see any notations between June up until um, late August um, during the inspection. But upon inspecting the property, I do see that the items still remain. Um, as you will see in the pictures that I'm going to show up, there's um, sinks, toilets, buckets miscellaneous items. I inspected the property today um, roughly about 12 o'clock and I'm showing that the violations still exist. 
Is this a vacant property? Actually, no. There's there's someone living there, but I they've never contacted me. It, I've seen activity going on in the house, but um, upon coming up, they never come outside. But someone is living there. Okay. And please take note that the notice to appear for tonight's hearing was posted at the property on September twenty first. I have been presented photographs that were taken on today, um, October 3rd, 2012. And you're indicated this it, it's in the same condition as it was back in in June or back in September when you from um, back well back in both September and June the same sink the same water container buckets everything still remains Sorry. I find there was proper notice um, homeowners failed to appear um, based on the testimony of the code officer that the violation still exists. Uh, we will give the abatement date of November 7th, 2012. Um, if not abated by November 7th, we will assess fines in the amount of $25 per day. $25 per day. Okay. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Good night. Thank good you. Good night. For the record, agenda item number 49 against uh, Ray E. Miller will be postponed to the November 7th hearing calendar. Agenda item 49 will be postponed one month. The officer is not here. Okay. So we'll re reset that. Okay. Good night, Sam. And to my records, the last case will be agenda item number 16 against Ellie R. and Jean P. Fisher, who ha own the property at 14230 West Dixie Highway uh, and have are renting the property uh, to a business called Cleaner World. Case is CEZCU 2012-00149. This is a certificate of use case. Uh, cited by myself on uh, uh, April 10th, 2012. It is a new case. Um, Your Honor, back on uh, April 10th, uh, the property, this particular property, uh, Cleaner World, was visited by Gary Beswick, a, min a minimum housing officer, who works for the City of North Miami Building and Zoning Department. He, at uh, on uh, March uh, 28th at uh, 1244 p.m., he made contact with an Avis Wilson at the property and presented her with a certificate of use application packet. The property ownership was determined uh, was for uh, this property was determined by and verified via the Miami-Dade County uh, Property Appraisers uh, Records Database. Uh, notice uh, of a violation was uh, was mailed out on April 10th, 2012. To the uh, to the property owner, together with a flyer that explained uh, what the certificate of use was and w and the requirements for for uh, uh, complying with this uh, notice of violation. Um, to date, uh, the, uh, the 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 pro the property owner and or tenant have not obtained a certificate of use through the city's building and zoning department. Therefore, they're out of compliance. And saying this is a new case. We would uh, seek a finding in favor of the city that the violation does exist, and we're asking for a short abatement date of November 7th and a fine to be selected if not uh, uh, complied by the abatement date. And just for a matter of record, fines for for the similar cases that have been imposed for since March for this type of violation is $100 a day. Okay. I find... Um notice was proper and the violation still exists as of um, today they've were given ample opportunity since April 2012 to the present to remedy the situation and um, have failed to do so I find in favor of the city and um, give an abatement date of November 7th 
if not abated by November 7th, we will um, assess fines in the amount of $100 per day. Okay, and I would like to add on to the, uh, this, this case record that the notice to appear for tonight's hearing was uh, posted at the property on September 23rd, 2012 uh, at 1 p.m. by um, uh, Code Officer Vito and Christie. Okay, so we have that on the record. Thank you. Uh, I'll check with our clerk. I believe she'll verify that uh, that concludes the, the calendar call for tonight. We have no old business and no new business. Thank so, you. Uh, with it, if it's your will and pleasure, we will. It is now uh, 7:48 p.m. and we will adjourn. So adjourn. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. My first day. <laughs> Thank you, Dunia. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you shut off your mic. No, I turned it off already. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to.